One of the most difficult jobs for an electrician is when you get a trip and you don't know which circuit's causing the problem. So the RCD trips, there's several circuits on the RCD and uh, we don't know which one's causing it. And to make matters worse, it's an intermittent fault. So when you come to have a look, you put the RCD back on and everything works again. And then another day or so goes by and the RCD trips and it's one of several circuits. The first thing you need to do is to think about changing all the circuit breakers for RCBOs so that every individual breaker has its own independent RCD. And that way, if it's a, a trip on a faulty neutral or just some earth leakage, then the individual breaker is going to trip rather than the whole RCD. And then you've got the opportunity of isolating the circuit and then having a more of an idea of where the problem is. So that's what's happening on this particular property. And um, today we're going to look at changing all the circuit breakers for RCBOs, removing the RCDs completely and adding surge protection, which is not included in this circuit. Let's have a look. So the consumer unit is in the garage and the electrics have tripped in the house. When we have a look, we can see that there's two RCDs. The one on the left here is tripped. So it could be the hob, the ovens, ground floor sockets, the garage sockets, the water heater, second floor sockets, first floor lighting, second floor lighting, or smoke alarms. Any of those could be causing this RTCD to trip. Let's put it on. Everything's just come back on, but it hasn't tripped again, so it's an intermittent fault. And it could be any one of those circuits. On the other side of the board, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circuits. Don't even know what the last one is. And it's a 40 amp. So we've got an RCD on the right. So we're going to remove the entire installation and change all these circuit breakers for RCBOs. There's no surge protection in this board. So we're going to add surge protection while we're doing the job. Because we're removing two RCDs, we've got two modules free there, two modules free there, which means we're going to end up with four free modules. The surge protection device takes up one module, so we need to buy three blanking plates to fill up those three gaps once we've done the job. And we need to look at every single circuit breaker, what their value is, and to purchase the RCBO for that value. Notice that there's a different brand MCB in this board which is not correct so we need to make sure they're all the same brand brand is niglon so let's make sure we buy all niglon rcbo's and a niglon surge protection device and then we'll replace the entire contents of this consumer unit that's coming up next Deliveries arrived and uh, we have all the RCBOs in the box that came to £204.15. When I placed the order, I forgot the blanking units, three of them, so I had to order them separately. Got it in just in time. Now they were £8.93, so around about £215 for this entire job. It's not cheap, but it's gonna solve all the problems. So what did we get? RCBOs. Three blanking units. And surge protection kit. 
So, everything's there. All we need to do now is to fit it into the consumer unit. Job number one, safe isolation. Let's knock the power off completely. Testing the RCDs, they're not tripping. Looks like the power's off. We'll take the lid off and then we'll test that with our meter. The alarm system's complaining. It's got no power. That's gonna drive me nuts. But we're gonna be listening to that throughout this whole installation. test that we've got no power on the uh, output side and then we'll carry on and remove all the brake. So I've got my uh, probe tester. Let's test the incoming live. That's showing 240 volts and the output is no voltage at all. So we can start removing these one by one. So let's start on the right hand side. I think we'll add the RCBOs one at a time as we go. So the first one is a 40 amp supply, which I now know is for a summer house in the garden. I'm just going to remove these uh, bus bars at the bottom. Let's make life easier. two bus bars so we need to have one long bus bar we're gonna to have to work out a way of doing that Amp. So most of the way there now, we've got uh, two MCBs left to change. So this one's a 10 amp MCB. So I'll just take the load out of the top, remove the MCB, and pick up the 10 amp RCBO. 
that on the din rail, slide him up. Let's just leave the neutral feed in to one side for the minute. So we'll put the load back in the live output at the top. take out of the neutral bar where it used to be and we send that into the output of the RCBO now for the uh, blanks so the neutral feed we'll bring that in later the load supply to the circuit goes in the live out extended previously so we can remove that extension now. Without losing too much cable. It's a bit bulky, shame I'm not going to leave that on there. Let's cut him right off. RCBOs are now in, and all the lives are in. We need to get a new buzz bar to go along the entire length, so we're going to have to go and pick that up now. And we're going to get some a new longer neutral bar so that all these neutrals can go in one. Um, I don't want to link the two together, so I haven't got uh, the appropriate cable for that. So we'll get a new neutral bar and we'll get a new buzz bar and we'll work out how many we need for that. And then put this in a closer together. look. Now all the RCBOs are in. So we removed the bus bar from the bottom. Still got a live feed coming in, but this is isolated now, so the bottom's dead. So we need a new bus to go along the entire length of the bottom. That's the next bit. We need a new 
long neutral bar for all the neutral inputs to the RCBOs, so they'll all get dressed into that. And um, we'll put three blanks on the end and the cover will go on. And that's the installation complete. You just get that neutral bar and that bus bar now. Okay, so they're all in there now. We've um, had to extend the uh, bus bar cover at the top, at the bottom, because obviously it's longer than original. Um, all the neutrals now are in the neutral bar. We've just bridged across with uh, an old piece of bus bar to link the two neutrals together. So we've got one long neutral bar. From the main incoming, we've just kept one of those uh, 25 mil neutral tails just to go up and feed the neutral bar off the main cutout. And then the bus bar supplies all the RCBOs. Um, all the circuits are in and all the neutrals are in. And that's the installation complete. We can now wait and see which one of these has got the problem circuit and we can identify that circuit immediately when it trips out. So let's wait and see what happens. The lid can go on and that's job done. We've got the lid back on now. Relabeled all the circuits correctly. And they're all the same brand now. And they're all labeled. We've labeled the surge protection unit as well at the end. And we've also labeled the new installation date and given it a 10 year lifespan. Job done. Well, that's the installation of the RCBOs into the consumer unit. All we need to do now is wait and uh, wait for this to trip out again um, because there's obviously a fault in the house somewhere but at least now we know which circuit's going to be causing the problem and then we can investigate that particular circuit and um, identify the problem. Even though it's cost 100 and, sorry, 210 pounds to replace the RCBOs, well, first of all, we'd probably save that in labor, having to identify the problem, because now we're gonna know which circuit's causing it. Um, but also we've uh, made this house much safer in that um, there's much more redundancy, as they call it. So when there is a fault, we're not gonna take down half the house uh, with us. So uh, only the circuit with the fault is gonna trip out. So it's definitely the way forward. Um, it's worth upgrading consumer units like this, um, but make sure it's done by a registered electrician um, because this now needs to be um, notified under Part P of Building Control Regulations. Um, I'm in the N NIC EIC, so uh, I'll issue an NIC EIC certificate and I'll notify the work to the local authority. And there'll be two certificates for that, which then get handed to the client. But that's it. Thanks for watching, hope it helps. And uh, if you're able to subscribe, that's great. The more subscriptions I get on this, uh, the more beneficial it is for me to do more videos. And uh, I'll just keep banging them out there as long as they're useful. Thanks a lot.